into real estate is simple, but it is definitely not easy. I think we can all agree on that. It takes time, effort, energy, and a whole lot of hard work. Now, as our industry is continuing to adapt and evolve, we have to do more in order for us to be successful in this career. So today we're gonna to be diving into some of my best advice for you to be a successful real estate agent. If we have not met already, hello, my name is Karis. I'm a real estate broker here in South Florida. And if you enjoy all things real estate, social media, and self-development, then you will enjoy this channel. So make sure you subscribe and stick around. All right, if you wanna dive in deep and learn how to be successful in this crazy career that we call real estate, and just keep on watching. Okay, now before we dive in, if you are going through this video and in your head you feel like maybe you're stuck, you want to change, or you want to just take your real estate business to the next level, then I will leave a link in the description below to discuss the option of us partnering at Real Brokerage. Okay, let's get into it. So we're gonna be diving into five different things here, and if there's one thing that stands out to you that you are gonna implement after this video, because you know what I say, it's all about taking action and not just learning, then I want you to drop it in the comments below because I'd love to hear what stood out to you. Let's go into number one, which is choosing your specialty. Now, I'm a big believer that if you try and serve everyone, you are going to serve no one. There are many people out there who need to buy and sell houses. Many, 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 many. And in order for you to connect with the right person, you have to know who specifically that person is because you cannot serve the hundreds of thousands of people who are around you. But what you can do is you can get really good at one specific niche, learn everything there is to know about them, their hurdles, their wants, their needs, their struggles, what their questions are, and you can be the go-to person for that specific specialty. Now, there's two different ways that you could go about this. You could go in terms of specialty with a niche, investment properties, luxury, first time home buyers, new construction, relocation, this side of the niche specific. But the other option you could go into is an area specific. So this is where you're maybe becoming the go-to agent in a specific neighborhood or the go-to agent in a specific development. But whether you're doing the area specific or the niche specific, you want to make sure that you're becoming the go-to. So you need to learn everything, the ins and the outs of that specific person, the target audience, the ideal client, who it is you're trying to serve, especially nowadays with everything that's going on in this industry you have to know what makes you different the average person knows 12 real estate agents 12 and out of that 12 they interview one one person even though they know 11 more so the question is how do you become that one now let me ask you this if bob knows 12 people who are realtors and 11 of them are all general specific. They're serving everyone. They're providing all content to different things here, there, everywhere. But then he has one, one person that he knows and they are providing everything you need to know about investment properties, everything you need to know about how to calculate ROI and the things to look for and the things that, you know, maybe mistakes that people make when investing in properties. When it comes to him, wanting to invest in his first property. Who do you think the one agent is that Bob is going to call? It's going to be that one. So when it comes to looking at your real estate business, you need to figure out, am I gonna be niche specific? Am I gonna be area specific? And then focus on that one thing. Become the go-to and be top of mind so that whenever someone thinks about that area or that specialty, you are the name you are the one person that they phone or text. Number two, build your systems and processes. Now I know, this probably overwhelms a lot of people when it comes to the thought of building a system and a process, but it is necessary for you in your business to have a sustainable career that is actually going to have longevity. And ideally, you want to set up systems so that you can automate as much of it as possible. Now, if you haven't already seen my video on how to go through a client journey funnel, going from random stranger to raving fan, then I will leave a link to it in the description below. But for now, just a summary, 
going down the funnel, when someone is a stranger, you've got to take them through your customer journey funnel. And then the aim is at the bottom after even they are a client, they've closed, transaction is done, you want them to be given your referrals and for them to be repeat business. Now, whether you're working with buyers or with sellers, there are different steps that you need to take them through. So it's best to work from the top and then work your way through the funnel and then figure out how you can systematize each step in the process. But using organizational tools, using things like CRMs and email marketing and drip campaigns and newsletters and being top of mind throughout the whole process. But you can have things that go out here and there and do a post here and a mailer there. But if you don't have a system for it, a lot of the times it's a waste of time and a waste of money. For example, an open house. And you know I like to talk about open houses because a lot of agents, they will host an open house and they will go there the one day and maybe they'll have some flyers printed and you know, some cookies and some water and that's it. They have their people come through, they'll maybe have a sign in sheet and that's it, that's all. It's like checking off the chore that it's done. However, one open house can be leveraged into many clients buyers and sellers if it is done correctly. But it's done correctly by having a system and a process and how that works. Marketing beforehand, the day of, and then follow up afterwards. But unless you have that process of how it all works, then it's kind of just a waste of time and a waste of money. So setting up these things, becoming a master in what it is that you are doing for lead generation, build your processes around it, and get really good at doing your one thing. The third piece of advice that I have for becoming a successful real estate agent is to nail down your scripts. Now, when I say scripts, most people think of what you say when you phone somebody, what you say when you knock on the door, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about communication in general throughout the entire process. From the interaction, the first time when you're speaking with somebody, it could be your script of how you tell someone that you are a realtor without actually telling somebody I'm a realtor. It could be the negotiation at the table when you're speaking to somebody about signing a listing agreement and they don't want to pay a buyer's commission. It could be the conversation with the other agent when you're negotiating how it works with the inspection and what your seller is willing to do and what their buyer is willing to do. It could be at a buyer's consultation when you've got to sit there and prove your value and your worth before you've even showed them a house and have them sign an agreement. There are scripts and conversations that you need to know and nail down in order to be successful in this industry. But what I'm saying, knowing your scripts, it is not being able to just speak line after line and thinking about the next thing that you need to say. That is not what I'm talking about. When I'm saying knowing your scripts, I'm saying you know them left and right, back, front. You know them inside and out. It's not a question on, oh, I don't know what I'm about to say next, or you're thinking about it, so then you're getting stressed. You know how to communicate in all of these different scenarios and situations. If I asked you right now, and be honest with yourself, what makes you different as a real estate agent? Could you answer that? If I sat here and said, I don't wanna pay a buyer's commission, would you know exactly what to say right after and could say it with confidence? If I was with you and I said, I don't wanna sign an agreement, but I wanna see this house. What are you saying back? If I was a seller sitting in front of you right now and I said, Sarah said she would only charge one and a half percent commission. Why should I hire you? Do you know, be honest with yourself. Do you know how to answer each of those questions? And not just answer them, be able to speak with confidence clearly and get past those questions. Are you honest with yourself with what that answer is? Because most people do not. So that is what I mean when I say you need to nail your scripts. You need to know them front and back to the point that you're not able to just say them, you're able to speak them with confidence because confidence comes from competence. So you get competent by knowing what you're talking about. So nail your scripts. Number four is to build your brand and your social presence. 
Now, you know there's not gonna be a video that I'm gonna make on being a successful realtor without talking about personal brand and social media. We know this. But it is even more so important now because the fact of how many people, buyers and sellers, who are going to social media to find their real estate agent. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, they are being used as the search engine to find specific realtors in specific areas, which is also why I was stating that it's so important, whether you're doing niche specific or area specific, to put that into your social media content because you want them to come to your profile and know that you serve that area or that niche, but we'll move past that. You need to have cohesive branding across all of your social media platforms, have the same profile pictures, make sure you're using the same name, have searchable names on there, if you want more videos on social media, like breaking things down, let me know in the comments because I'll dive deeper into this. But for now, I want you to look on your social media profiles and ask yourself, would you follow you? Would you hire you? And then I want you to look and check and see if you have the three main things on your social media platforms, like in your bio. One, do you have the you're a realtor? You're in real estate. It sounds like a silly question, but I honestly come across multiple people who do not even have that in their bio. Number two, the area that you serve, make sure that's in there. And then the third thing, which is usually the most missed thing when it comes to having realtors on social media is a way for people to contact you. Now on Instagram, you can have a link on there on how they can directly reach out to you. On things like TikTok, you can only have a link if you've got over a certain number of followers. So if you do not have that number of followers, make sure your phone number ideally, or if not your email is in your TikTok profile. If you are making YouTube videos, which I recommend everyone be doing, we'll get onto that in a second, you need to make sure there's an easy way for them to contact you from your YouTube video. So have the contact information inside of the video, maybe at the intro and the outro. And then in your description, have all the ways to contact you. I'm a form girl. I think it's a great way for people to fill it out. You can also pre-qualify them and let them put in all the information. Add your phone number, add your email, give them ways to contact you. If YouTube is something that you want to do, or maybe you're doing it, but you just need a little bit of help, then I have a full video on breaking down how to use YouTube for real estate, the things that I wish I knew before I started. I will leave that also linked in the description below so you can watch that after this video. But YouTube is owned by Google. And why that is great is because of search engine optimization. So when somebody is on a platform, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Google, whether it be TikTok, whether it be Instagram, when they type in real estate agent in Baltimore, Maryland, you're the one that's coming up. It's all well and good to be making social media content and to be making videos. I love that. However, we need a purpose behind it. And so your purpose is to make sure that you're being found on these videos. That's why I speak so much and I can preach for so long on SEO because that is actually how people are gonna find your videos and find you to then connect with in order to buy or sell a house. Now the fifth piece of advice that I have on being a successful realtor is building deeper relationships. We focus so much on lead generation and I preach so much on lead generation because it is the number one hurdle that realtors have. It's just getting clients, right? It's lead generation, it's all of that. However, what I have in this video for what I recommend is building deeper relationships with people that you already know. It's all well and good to lead generate and get more clients and leads in your database. However, you need to make sure that you're nurturing the people that you already have inside of your circle, that you already have inside of your network. So whether these are friends, family members, neighbors, it could also be vendor partners, your lenders, your title people, your inspector. It could be people locally, people in your community, people at church, people who are already in your network, build deeper relationships with them. That's why I always recommend doing lead generation also around things that you're already doing. So for example, group fitness classes, you're already going to the fitness class, 
Build deeper relationships with the people who are there every week, same as you. Maybe you're someone who likes arts and crafts. I'm actually a really crafty person that you probably didn't know that, but big arts and crafts girl. Maybe there is a craft group or a knitting group or a book club and you go to that anyway, build deeper relationships with the people that are already there. The people you already have some sort of relationship with, connect with them, maybe meet one of them one-on-one. -on -one. And it's not doing it with an ulterior motive of like, I need to get close to them because if I want them to think of me when it comes to real estate. It's just being a nice person in general. You give and then due to the law of reciprocity, you're likely going to receive it back. I'm a big believer in being a high value person and not high value where you think you're better than everyone. Cause I think that's sometimes what people perceive of like being high value. It is building yourself to be of high value so that people leave a conversation with you feeling full, feeling that they learned something or that they were able to speak about something or that you were just able to add value to them in some sort of way. Maybe you're a good connector, you connected them with a certain person or maybe you're just someone who's really good at letting people vent and take weight off of their shoulders and just people leave and they're like, oh, that was a good conversation. And really it was them talking the whole time. But it's figuring out how you can be a high value person in different ways that people leave being around you feeling full fill their cup. The last thing for building deeper relationships I think is really important is your past clients. Most realtors are terrible at keeping in contact with their past clients because they see them exactly as that past. And it's important that you remember that your goal is for every past client to still be a client. Like you want them to still come to you for repeat business. You want them to still come to you with referring their friends and their family members. And the way you do that is by not even looking at them as past clients. It's looking at them as they are your clients for life. So maybe you're someone who has been in the industry for a while and you've got a lot of past clients. Spend some time, build deeper relationships and go and contact them. Just reach out, provide some value and they'll love it too. So those are my five main pieces of advice that I have for you, but I'm gonna give you three bonus tips because you're cool because you stayed to the end of the video. So first one is, accept you're gonna face rejection. It is just a part of the industry. It's a part of life to be honest with you, but look for the no, you're gonna face it. The question is how long is it gonna take you to dust that off and get back out there? Accept rejection, it's gonna happen, and it's just a part of it. Number two, learn how to manage your stress levels. Almost 80% of doctor's visits last year came from stress-related issues. And I will tell you right now, being in this industry is a whole lot of stress. But if you learn to manage it, and it's so much easier to go through this industry and deal with the roller coaster of real estate if you manage your own stress. Because I hate to break it to you, but if you didn't already know, you also have to manage other people's stress too. And so that just piles it on. So managing your stress levels is very important. And the third bonus tip is to prioritize resilience. If you want to be successful in this industry, you can do it. There are people who close hundreds of millions of dollars a year and they started brand new at some point in their life. Like I said at the start, this industry is simple, but it is not easy. So I have all the things that I have mentioned in this video. Make sure you drop down in the comments below what is at least one thing that you are taking from this that you are going to implement. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many videos you watch, and I have a lot on my channel. You could watch every single one of them, but if you do not take action and implement what you are learning, it does not matter. So. You want to be a successful real estate agent, take action, you've got this, and let's go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you in the next one.